As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So welcome as we celebrate our Mass on this Sunday, the third Sunday of Easter. Uh, we celebrate our Mass here in the little chapel of the Assumption. So you're welcome to join with us wherever you may be this morning and to celebrate this time of prayer, like the disciples who join together in prayer, perhaps sometimes filled with uncertainty and fear, but as we hear again in the appearance of Jesus following his resurrection, that he brings them peace. So as we come to celebrate our Mass, that we may find that peacefulness in prayer uh, together and alone, wherever we may be, but knowing that gift of unity of faith that we celebrate in our Mass. So as we pre prepare to celebrate our Mass, we call to mind our sin. We ask the Lord God for his gift of pardon and peace in our hearts. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. O God, may your people exult forever in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, you are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over 
and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold, when he said through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. First letter of Saint John. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. This is the word of the Lord. Lord Jesus, explain the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn within us as you talk to us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost, but he said, Why are you so agitated, and why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet, yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it. They stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? As they offered him a piece of grilled fish, he took 
which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, This is what I meant while I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets and in the Psalms, has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name repentance for forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. As uh, the account of the Acts of the Apostles describes the happenings and events after the resurrection of Jesus in the early church and how the preaching begins to spread, how the work of the Apostles' disciples becomes public. Uh, there's a hint of accusation of Peter as he just outlines how Jesus was wrongly condemned and put to death. And rather than seeking revenge for such an atrocity, he makes somewhat an allowance or an excuse for it, saying, well, but you didn't really know what you were doing. It's somehow contradictory to the way we often think and the way our minds may work. When something awful happens, especially injustice, we might wish to seek retribution or even revenge, worse still. But the message of the disciples, and of course it comes from the teaching of Christ himself, whom, after his own resurrection, he comes and meets the apostles, his close friends. He wants them to know that he is present with them. He wants to assure them that they have the message properly and openly in their minds. But he's careful to remind them that what Jesus has come to achieve is not about retribution or revenge or the wrath of God, but rather it is the preaching of something wonderfully new. It is the gift of repentance the gift of peace. And as often as Jesus comes to visit the disciples and join with them, his greeting most often is, peace be with you. Is that what the gift of faith brings to us? And is it how we celebrate it in our own way? That's the call that Jesus gives to us. That's that comforting notion that our faith celebrates the gift of God's peace. That's peace which can overcome all our own transgressions and difficulties. It's peace that overcomes our personal sin, our failings in life, and it's the peace of God that is celebrated among peoples, families, neighbors, friends, communities, nations throughout the world. If that hallmark of the gift of Christ's coming among us is the peacefulness that it brings, then his work is gaining ground then the teaching is successful and the witness and example of Jesus Christ is something that can never be shaken or taken away. As Jesus, in his appearances, comes to the disciples and wants them to draw as close to him and assure them that things are as ordinary and maybe extraordinary as they were prior to his own death, he gathers them close to him and it is that closeness to God, to his word, and it's through that closeness that he helps to open their minds, that they understand what it is they hear, what it is they carry, and what it is they share. So these Sundays and days of the Easter time are a time to be strengthened in our faith, to emphasize the core value of our faith and what it brings to us and to all people, and that how we too just like Jesus says to his own friends when he comes and stands amongst them, among them, talks with them, and of course, as any gathering involves, they share something to eat together. But he is, he is uh, always very intent on letting them know that you are my witnesses now. You know me, you know my message, you know what I want you to preach. You are my witnesses. These words are said to us this very day and all days as we celebrate our faith.
So let us recite together our profession of faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We give thanks to the Lord because he is good. We are united in the joy of the resurrection, and we turn to the Father with our prayers and petitions. For the Church, that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the Scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the grace of forgiveness, that we will be open to God's free and generous forgiveness and strive to forgive others as we have been forgiven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the gift of faith, that we will depend more fully on God in every aspect of our lives and grow in our confidence that God who will never abandon us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are broken and wounded, that they may find healing in Christ and that God will help us recognize them as our brothers and sisters through the wounded Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For an end to the pandemic, that God's healing love will restore the sick to health, make the vaccines effective, and curtail the spread of the virus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have died, that they may touch Christ and be one with him for all eternity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And in our Mass this morning, we remember especially in prayer, Maura Coldrick, Jack and Kathleen Fahey, and Bridget and James Crampton, whose anniversaries are around this time. That they may rest in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. And we pause to remember our own special intentions and prayers this morning as we celebrate the Mass. Lord, hear us. Loving Father, the resurrection of your Son gives us a new birth to a living hope. Let us live that hope always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is present where he is, is holy. This is holy. Standing on holy ground, 
Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, receive, we pray, the offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and to raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and are filled her with life by the power of the Holy Spirit. You never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as a prophet as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Jesus Christ our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present among us when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith He is Lord He is Lord He is risen from the dead and He is Lord Every Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your Church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, and Tom, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. 
Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her spouse, Saint Joseph, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. With hope and confidence, we pray to our Heavenly Father, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
In all the Easter work of Jesus, he led the disciples out of darkness into light, out of sadness onto joy, out of isolation into community. He did this by sharing himself with them, sharing the scriptures that spoke of him and the bread that was his body. No long instruction no long exhortation, just the openness of sharing himself with them. This is the plea to us, his church. Be light in darkness. Be joy in sorrow. Be community in isolation. Be Eucharist to dry bread. Be wholeness to broken life. Let us pray. O Lord, look with kindness upon your people and grant that we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today in our Mass we remember especially Maura Coldrick. Jack and Kathleen Fahey, Bridget and James Crampton, whose anniversaries are around this time. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And if you wish to drop off any messages or offerings at the church, from 12 until 2 o'clock today at Kiltoon Church, there will be uh, someone there to receive them for, from you. And uh, we wish you well and keep well this coming week. And please God, before too long, we will be able to have our return uh, to public worship. So we keep praying for uh, the progress on that journey out of darkness into light and to return to community, to all the things we enjoy and look forward to doing so. In the meantime, keep well, stay safe, and the Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.